So you slice some sprites up, you're ready to start building your scene. Let's take a look at one of the most common problems we see. So I'm gonna come under the HUD folder. It doesn't really matter what I grab here. I'm just gonna grab this heart. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag it into my scene. That's zero, zero, zero. And uh, let's get a background. Let's say I take this castle background, I drag that, drop it in my scene as well. Now, if we take a look at their position, they're both at zero, zero, zero. And the same thing for the heart. But we can't see the heart, and that's because it's behind the wall here. And to be fair, they're both on zero on the Z. So there's going to be instances where you can see the heart above the wall, and there's going to be times where it's behind the wall. Sometimes it's going to flicker. And if we take a head and jump out of 2D mode and try to take a look, we can't see the heart at all. Now, there's a few ways to fix this if we want the heart on top. One is to do a Z stacking of your actual sprites. So for instance, let's just take the castle wall. Let's move it back 0.1. You can get, even get more dramatic, maybe move it back a whole unit. I've seen in some games where people actually go and move it back as far as 10 units. And this is one way to make sure that it always shows up that way. The problem with this is that as long as we're with the orthogonal camera, the scale itself is always going to be the same. When we cover the camera, we'll look a little bit more at this. But if we ever end up switching to our perspective camera, the scale of our sprites is going to get all wonky. So this really isn't the best solution. So let's go ahead, we'll put it back at zero. And let's take a look at these sorting layers. Right here, it's part of the sprite renderer. So by default, everything is on the default. What I like to do when I'm setting up my first scene is go ahead and add a couple more to this. So I will go ahead and set a background layer. And I will also set a foreground layer. I'm going to take the background layer, drag it in behind my default, and that's how I look at it. The ones closer to the bottom are actually closer to the camera. The ones further to the back are further away from the camera. So I'm going to come back in, select my background. Well, let's take a look at the heart first. I'm going to leave the heart on default. I'm going to go ahead and take the background camera. I'm going to switch that to background. And there we go. They're both still at zero on Z. But as we swing around, we notice that we can always see the heart on top. Switch back into 2D mode. Now, very few times do I ever add more than just three to my actual sorting layers. All the rest of my sorting, I will do through my order in layer. So let's go ahead and we'll jump back into the HUD. And let's just grab a few more things. Let's go ahead and grab the, the, the blue gem. I'm going to go ahead and drag that in. Let's zoom right in. And it's on top. And let's say for some reason, let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's say I wanted this to be sort of like the background for my actual gem. Or sorry, for the heart. I don't want to switch it to the background layer. Because now it's going to fight with the, the background layer over here. Or that castle wall. I don't like switching my heart to the foreground layer because the foreground layer is stuff that I want to be like really close to the camera. So if your player is running through a cave, for instance, maybe you've got some like stalagmites or something like that, that you kind of want the player to run behind. That's the type of stuff that I put in the foreground. If it's a forest scene, I'll put some grass in there, maybe a tree or two. But generally the foreground I reserve for having stuff, like I said, in front of the player, between the player and the camera. So what we do is we use sorting layers for this. So I'm going to go ahead, set it back to default, and I'll select that heart. And I'm going to go ahead and set it to one. So just like before, the lower the number, the further back it is, the higher the number, the closer it is to the camera. If we went ahead and dropped, uh, let's drop this key in here as well now. We can't see the key. But if we went ahead and increased its order and layer, there we go, it's now on top. Now obviously, we'll have the stack I've got going here, purely demonstration. But hopefully it drives home the point of how to use the sorting layer and also the order in layer. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears.